in the April 2017 edition of What's New Massachusetts. We're hopping on the Orange Line and revisiting Somerville's posh new Assembly Row community. Get a helping of Southern Kin Cookhouse's chicken and waffles and whip out that paintbrush and get your creative juices flowing at Muse Paint Bar. Work up a sweat at Fit Row, the upcoming group of fitness studios opening this spring at Assembly. Then, watch us chat with Assembly Row's Patrick McMahon about what's new for the community this year. What's new, Massachusetts? Here are your co-hosts, Sam Baltrusis and Sharon Filia. Welcome to the April edition of What's New Massachusetts. My name is Sam Baltrusis. I'm an author and journalist. Joining me is my lovely co-host, Sharon Filia. How are you, Sam? Hi, Sharon. Hey, how are you? Hey, good. So we're revisiting my home, which is Assembly Row. We sure are. There are a lot of changes going on. We talked about that prior to taping today. There were quite a few stores closing, but then a lot of new construction, a lot of new things are happening. Yeah, so the Kenneth Cole store closed, which is where I get my clothes, and I was like really so I so know you're <laughs> bummed about that. <laughs> and you went to Pendleton, right? Pendleton, which I love. I've been shopping there for years, and I, I got some good deals, though. But they're closing. It was kind of sad. They were selling everything. I actually got a tons of weird things. Like, I got clipboards. I got a, a hole punch. I saw those. I saw those myself. <laughs> I so, saw those. I got a bunch of stuff for $3, mm -hmm. so it was pretty cool. But but out with the old, in with the new, um, we have a couple of things happening, this is, which is why we're updating this show. Right. Um, Lucky Strike is moving in. So the like, right. Lucky Strike Social, it's a bowling alley. That's right, It's a and it's a really, really big, big uh, company, from what I understand. I, I was reading up on it before we came on today. That is, that's going to be a real magnet for people to go in there. Mm -hmm. And then there's also Fit Row, and you're an instructor, so you're a fitness right. instructor. So and that's, also a bodybuilder, yeah. And it's it's going to be indoors and they're going to have a juice bar. It's going to be so great because it's more or less one-stop shopping. You can work out, you can do yoga, you can spin, you can get something to eat and it's, it's all indoors so it's very, very convenient. What's great about What's New Massachusetts, we're actually getting syndicated throughout the state of Massachusetts. So we picked up a couple of new affiliates and I want to say hello to those affiliates. We have a Revere. Fall River. That's right. We still have Cambridge and tons of more that's been added on. Oh, Salem was added as well. Yeah, it's so exciting, and I think I can speak for Sam. We're so so happy that that and we're welcoming to all or all of our new viewers, and we hope that you enjoy the show and that we can offer more uh, programming and and interesting things to um to see. So let's talk about Assembly Row and your experiences there. So um, we were able to go to my apartment complex in Assembly Row, and we had a party for our director, Michael Torero. It's his 30th yes, birthday. Yes, it was fun. But, you know, Assembly Row is so big, I had a hard time finding the entrance. All these, <laughs> I was like, where am I going? But it was really awesome because when we went in there, when, when you walk in on the first floor, there's, there's a gym area, and it looks pretty ex extensive. It, and I said to Sam, I have to move in here. Very, very nice, huge complex. Nice common area with a big widescreen TV and deep, nice, deep, comfy sofas. So we were watching the basketball game. So I live at the mall, and mm -hmm. I have all the amenities of living at the mall, yes. uh, including the noise. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, and all the construction noise, right? Oh, my gosh. But it'll be over at some point. Hi, this is Sharon Filiar for What's New Massachusetts. Here we are at Assembly Row, a burgeoning place of new developments and places to shop. And here we are at Muse Paint Bar, a studio that encourages people to come in and mingle, have fun, and do art. So we're going to talk to the general manager in just a moment. Joining me now is the general manager of Muse Paint Bar, Miss Kelly Moak. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Sharon. Great. Now, Muse Paint Bar is a great facility because someone can come in here without any experience whatsoever and have a lot of fun and make a creation, which we see um, hung here so, so nicely. So how do you instruct people who have no idea about art? Well, the instruction is very step-by-step. So first we'll introduce the materials that they're using. We'll show them the brushes, how to use the brushes, 
Also, we will show them how to mix the colors and try to break things down into simple shapes. Um, so really, you don't need to have any experience. A lot of our customers coming in haven't painted since kindergarten. So all of the paintings that are hung here are by first time participants? The paintings that are hanging up are, are master paintings that the different instructors have made um, because people, when they come, they will take home their own masterpiece. Okay, I was a little confused because I said, these paintings are pretty good. Okay, so you've cleared that up for us. So this is a lot of fun for people to come in here on date night or if they've seen a movie here in Assembly Row. Is that what you find that people do? Definitely. So we get a lot of couples coming in here for date night. Um, there's different restaurants in the area. Sometimes they go before or after they come here. Um, we even offer couples night, which is a night where people will come, put two canvases together, and have to work together to complete the piece. How often do you offer couples night? We offer couples night about once a month. Um, once in a while that will change, but usually it's once a month. Have you found that the popularity of Muse Paint Bar has increased over time, you know, with, with the burgeoning um, uh, construction going on, with, with, the, with the influx of people? Do you find that there is more, that there is more uh, people coming in? Definitely. Our, our business has been doing wonderful. Uh, there's so many new things popping up in Assembly Row, and people will walk by see the studio and wonder what we are. So we've been getting a lot of customers. Oh, wow. So now, is it primarily painting or do you work in other, um, in other media as well? So it's primarily painting. We use acrylic paints here and we will work on canvas mostly. Sometimes we offer wine glass painting where we will paint designs on wine glasses. Also, we have mason jar painting, mm -hmm. vase painting. So we will have special events um, once in a while, but most nights we're painting on canvas. And, you know, with everyone working together, probably a lot of friendships are fostered here. Do you find that? Definitely. There's music played throughout the session, and the instructors are always trying to be very friendly with customers. So even if you don't know the people at the table next to you, sometimes you'll spark up a conversation because you like something that's going on in their painting. So certainly a lot of friendships foster here. Wow. Muse Paint Bar sounds like an amazing experience. I'm sure that many of our viewers would love to come down to Assembly Row and check it out. Well, Kelly, thank you so much for joining us and continued success to you. Thanks, Sharon. Ooh. So if you'd like to check out your artistic side, come on down to Muse Paint Bar here at Assembly Row in Somerville, Massachusetts. How are you doing, Patrick? Good. Glad, uh, glad to be here. So what's your title? So you're the Director of Development right. for Federal Realty, and you're also you're in charge of Assembly Row. Right. I'm in charge of, of the development piece of Assembly Row. Right. So we've got, it's myself, and then there's a general manager who essentially runs and oper uh, operates what we have already existing. Did you have any idea that it was going to be as popular as it is? Um, uh, We've been pleasantly surprised. I've been pleasantly <laughs> surprised. We had an inkling of it, I guess. Yeah. Um, and and we, we understood that the product that we were going to deliver would be something unique in the marketplace. But more, uh, more I think, uh, more surprising to us has been just how strong of an impact the tea has had on the success of assembly and uh, what that's meant for our community. It is the fundamental building block for what's happened over there in that neighborhood. I have to totally agree with you on that because the T, having access to the T has been so important. As I live in uh, Ava Summerville and uh, living there, um, it actually, I don't use the T a lot because I'm always uh, either eating there or I spend so much time in Assembly Row. Which is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but, like your background, so did you, you lived in Charlestown before? Right, I lived in Charlestown for almost 15 years. And how, so the, I'm sure that Assembly Row is affecting the community like including Charlestown, Malden, Everett. What what are some of the, what's some of the feedback from the outlying communities? Sure, uh, some of the feedback is uh, the the outlying communities are particularly the, those that are immediately adjacent to Assembly that essentially aren't Somerville. 
uh, have really embraced not just what, we, what we've offered from a shopping standpoint and from a restaurant standpoint, but what we've offered as by way of public spaces. Mm. So we've got the park right there on the river, we've got the amphitheater there, the playground that's there. It's, it's, an, it's an area that's become very inviting for families. And so on Saturdays and Sundays, you'll see those areas populated with strollers and with kids and with families kind of not only coming there to shop, but also coming there just to recreate or enjoy those spaces. I absolutely love the park right next to the Mystic River. Um, I sit on a bench, I drink my coffee, I just really enjoy the, the view. Um, was that something, were you involved with that as well? We were, so that, that, that area, that the park itself, Baxter State Park, is DCR on land, and as part of our development package, as it related to community benefits, we undertook the design, the construction, and now we actually program, operate, and manage that park. So the events that occur there, the yoga in the park in the summertime, some of the outdoor concert series that occur there, that, that's all us. And there's, yeah, there's also movies as well. I've Correct. seen movie night. <laughs> right, yeah, so yeah, to the, to the family piece of it. We just did Home Alone there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and as far as like, so some, what are some of the things that you enjoy doing as someone that's part of Assembly Row? Well, I, I probably like you, I enjoy the restaurants. Me too. Um, yeah. Working there, when you're there, kind of not just for lunch, but sometimes often for dinner. Um, the restaurant's great, the, the restaurant selection is fantastic. We were very careful to kind of curate a variety of restaurant offerings so that we weren't all getting, say, one, you know, one sort of cuisine or, or one sort of um, restaurant. But we have, obviously, we have Legal's, which is seafood. We've got Papagaya, which is Mexican. We've got several bars there. We've got Southern Kin that just opened this past year, which is, a, you know, obviously a Southern restaurant. So we were very careful to curate a mix of restaurants there so that we weren't having any one of the same thing, which also, the restaurant tours we're excited about because nobody's really competing with one another. In fact, they all they all kind of help to create a, a here or a there there, so to speak. So, uh, speaking of restaurants, so some of the newer ones, like Toto's new, Toto right. Ramen, um, Southern Ken opened up this last year. Yes. Um, Paul's Bakery. Right. Um, all great places, and I think the curation is is was very um, eclectic and amazing. Like you can have something different every night. Well, that's great. That's a, it's great to hear his feedback from somebody else. But yeah, yeah. The, and that was exact. That was exactly the intent. Now, the one thing that I'm <laughs> looking forward to is the Trader Joe's opening up. Yes. Was that something that you guys were always planning on doing, adding a grocery store element to it? We always wanted to do that, and so you know that we always had been working on trying to attract a grocer to the area because there's nothing that underscores a place as a neighborhood than really a grocer. Yeah. Uh, it's something that we obviously all need uh, and it's something that we worked very hard to get over a very long period of time and we're excited that that currently is underway. The construction of Trader Joe's is currently underway. We hope to open Traders sometime this summer. And of all the, the grocers to have, Trader Joe's is my favorite. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, I'm having, I'm so lucky to live there. <laughs> so other things, it's a, de it's a destination, so there's a lot of events to do. People right. just kind of go and walk around, they go to JP Lex, um, right. they go to Starbucks, get their coffee. Um, what are some things coming up uh, in, in 2017 as far as like things to do, events? So uh, as far as events and, and programming, we'll, we'll continue to kind of, we'll continue with the program that's occurred there to date. So we'll have, you know, in the, in the warmer months, uh, we'll have the movie nights, we'll have the free yoga in the park on Wednesday evenings. Um, we will continue to have the concert series and the lecture series that we do out there on Baxter and the, the, and the Riverfront Park. I, I think that the biggest events that are upcoming in this new year, in, in 2017, really are the opening of the buildings that we've currently got underway, or rather under construction. So right now we're underway with 450 residential units, rental apartments, uh, immediately next door to Ava, as you probably know and yeah. may have heard. I've heard, um, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> uh, kind of loud. Literally <laughs> and figuratively. Uh, uh, we've got 447 rental units in that building. That's a 20-story tower with 40,000 square feet of ground floor retail space. Across the street from that, we've got uh, a 130, uh, I'm sorry, 122 four-cell condominiums over 159 room hotel over 21,000 square feet of ground floor retail space in that building. Both of those buildings will actually, the, the apartment building will begin to open in 2017. The hotel and condominium building across the street will hopefully begin to open in 2017. We're really projecting an opening in early 2018. Okay. So those are really, I, I would say if there's events that are upcoming, they're more in the form of those buildings coming online. As well, further down the street, away from Ava, the partner's building. We've got 100,000 uh, square feet of ground floor and second floor retail space in that building. And we'll begin to open restaurants, 
uh, shops uh, in that building this summer. In fact, you probably know Mike's Pastry will open in late spring. We're very excited to have Mike's. Where is Mike's opening? So is it going to be at the, the new, uh, near Alloy, the condos? So Mike's is actually going to be in the Partners Building. Oh, okay. So if you were to go there today, just recently we took the barricades away, meaning we've we've begun we've begun construction there, and we've got the storefront in. So you can actually s you can look in and see construction underway there in the Mike's Building. It's in the Partners Building, closest to the South Head House of the T Station. I will definitely head over there when it, when it opens. Here we are once again with Mr. Patrick McMahon, um, the Development Officer for Federal Realty Trust. So Sam actually had a really great interview with you about what was happening, but I'd like to ask you, what is the future for Assembly Row, especially in light of all the new employees coming in with, with, um, with partners? Um, well, in addition to the partners opening and the continued move-in of partners employees to their office building, we've got, I mentioned, the 447-unit apartment building under construction that will begin to open in 17. We've got, as I mentioned, the hotel condominium building, which will begin hopefully to open in late 17, if not early 18. Uh, we've also, we're underway right now with a, a park area between those two buildings that are under construction and the partners building. Okay. We're calling it Assembly Line Park. Uh, the park itself will be approximately half an acre, um, and it will be both softscape and hardscape. As well, we're constructing two small one-story buildings on either end of the park uh, that will essentially serve to activate that space. Uh, each one of them will be one. We've got a coffee bakery concept that will move into one, and we're talking to a restaurant concept to move into the other. Both of those concepts will kind of spill out into the park space where you have tables and chairs outdoors so that that park really becomes an active, dynamic place that's very inviting to people. We so, planted so it seems like that you're trying to make this a really self-contained area where people can just go to Assembly Row and work and stay, live, play, do everything there. Right, and that's the intention coming out of the gate, uh, without question. Given that you know, ten years ago, it was there really wasn't anything there, and there was no there there. So our intention certainly is to provide all of those sort of call them neighborhood amenities, so that people aren't necessarily inclined to leave. However, the overarching intention is hopefully one day we get to a point where no one really knows where Assembly Row stops and starts, where oh, our neighborhood see. begins to bleed with the neighborhood that really is, uh, that has yet to be developed in the Assembly Square District and the neighborhood of East, East Somerville, yes. right immediately below the highway. So essentially, the building and construction of Assembly Row is going to continue for quite a while. Patrick, tell me about Fit Row. Well, we're really excited about Fit Row. It's a new concept that we've essentially incubated. Um, we, w we went out to the health, the, the health kind of fitness space, uh, talked to a number of different gyms, a number of different health clubs, wanted to bring a health club to, the, to assembly, to the neighborhood. Again, kind of a neighborhood amenity. Um, and really began to understand that there are uh, you know, a lot of very small, singular, single operators out there. Yes. Yoga studios, yes. Pilates studios, bar studios. Yes and got very interested in what those folks were doing, kind of nationwide. And we kind of conceived this concept um, that we're, we've now labeled Fit Row, in which we're, we're going to have six different, five or six different health, health fitness concepts all aggregated in one space. That's going to do well. So in the Partners wow. Building, as I mentioned, we've got 100,000 square feet of ground floor and second floor retail. On the second floor is where we're going to have Fit Row. So right now, we've already signed up Title Boxing, which is a boxing gym. We've signed up Orange Theory, which is kind of like a, a very intense boot camp um, fitness concept. We've also signed up Squeeze, which is a juice bar. Um, and we've got two other concepts, one that's, one that's a yoga Pilates studio and then one that's really kind of a spinning studio. All of these will be aggregated, really, right, one right after the other, next door to one another. There'll be, there'll, there'll be a common space that kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of joins them or connects them all with Squeeze, really, at the end of that space. And then we've got a roof deck as well. So in the warmer summer months, when you're done boxing or you're done at Orange Theory, right. you can get your smoothie and you can sit out on the, on the roof deck after, you, after your workout. Well, as you know, I'm a pro bodybuilder, so I think you have one customer right here. I'm ready to sign awesome. up. So that sounds really exciting. And we'll begin to open that up in the summer of, of, of 17. Oh, so that's coming up very, very it soon. Is. We're under construction with it right now. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you.
This is Sharon Filiar for What's New Massachusetts. Here we are at Southern Kin Restaurant, here in the heart of Assembly Row, with good old fashioned down home Southern cooking. With me now is Mr. William Johnson, the General Manager of Southern Kin Cookhouse. Thank you so much for joining us oh, today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for stopping by and visiting us. This is great. You know, as soon as we came in, you can feel the energy of the restaurant, the beautiful ambiance, the smell of the food, and look at these beautiful dishes. How do you come up with this menu? You know, it, it's definitely a collaboration. We're part of Boston Nightlife Venture, and we have a culinary team uh, led by Chef Bill Brodsky, who's our culinary director. We really were looking for something that Somerville didn't have to offer, looking for a concept that, that we could find that was unique and be able to put it in here and be a success. And, you know, we've been very blessed, fortunately, that this concept is doing extremely well in Assembly Row. And I'm so impressed with the presentation. Could you take us through the dishes that you have in front of us here? You know, one of the, the unique things about Southern King Cookhouse is that we are the only non-franchise restaurant in Assembly Row. So we have a little bit of wiggle room there to do different things. So we're a 100% scratch kitchen. Nothing comes frozen off a truck ever. We make all of our sauces. Everything is prepped daily in-house. So right here we have our famous chicken and waffles. Ooh. We're looking at a cheddar chive waffle. We have our golden delicious <laughs> fried My chicken goodness. with some Fresno chilies. Uh, a house uh, honey, house made honey hot. We also here have our hogs and hooch, which is going to be our homemade farmhouse biscuits, a nice bourbon braised uh, pork belly, and then we're topping it with a fried green tomato, which is typical to the south, oh, I see and we're hitting that. it with a little chow chow relish and a little bit of Fresno uh, drizzle as well. Right here we have one of our number one items, it's our frogmore stew. I'm very pleased with this dish. Mm -hmm. Everything once again is extremely local and extremely fresh. So we have fresh PEI mussels, dayboat scallops, uh, gulf shrimp, local andouille sausage, corn on the cob, red bliss potatoes, and uh, a nice tomato okra broth. So it's almost like when the north meets the south, little New England clam boil. Wow, that is a mouthful. Now, I was fooled because I thought that was popcorn over there, but it's a drink. Yeah, all of our drinks, once again, we have a, a beverage director, Mike Bowton. Uh, he's part of Boston Light Light Ventures. So all of our cocktails are craft. Uh, we infuse our own bourbon in-house, Four Roses bourbon. So this is our little play at the night at the movies. Um, it's a little caramel popcorn, some cola. Everything goes well. It's a nice bourbon-based drink. Exciting. Now, are these are these the most favorite, the most popular dishes here at your establishment? You know, we're, we're very fortunate that everything moves, everything's selling. Uh, I guess it depends what mood you're in. You know, it's amazing. The smell is intoxicating. Now, what I also wanted to ask you about, Mr. Johnson, is the beautiful decor. The fans are eclectic, the lighting. How did you come up with, with the the concept for the uh, decor? Well, you know, Boston Nightlife Ventures is really trying to be the cutting edge in the hospitality industry. So it's a collaboration, a lot of minds come in between it. Uh, but we wanted to do things like the exposed brick and the American flag and the high ceilings and the industrial look, really to fit in with the assembly row uh, feel. And I wanted to ask you, there's so much construction going on here in Assembly Row. How has that affected your, your, your influx of customers? You know what, as far as our customer base goes, the, the construction hasn't done anything except get me excited for the future. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This looks like an exciting establishment, continued success to you. And I think I'm going to make a little trip here and try some of that chicken and waffles. Thank you so much thank for joining us. Thank you very much us. for coming. Sharon, that was a great show. It was. We had a great time revisiting the places where we went to in January. It was wonderful. I actually went back to um, the Southern Ken and I had the Frogmore stew. It was amazing. Oh, oh no. Was it as good as it was the first time? It was It was almost as good. The first time, you can never beat the first time, but the second time I was literally like I was drinking the, the okra broth. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> oh my God. But the food there is so wonderful because they make everything right there. They have the best chefs. Fresh food, everything is amazing. You have to check it out. And I learned recently that the three tallest buildings in Somerville are based mm -hmm. in Assembly Row. So right. we have the two new complexes, the Mirage and the Alloy mm -hmm. condos. Um, and then we also have Partners Healthcare. So the three tallest buildings are in, in Assembly Row. It is. And I tell you, I remember when they first started building Partners Healthcare, and everyone is saying, oh gosh, you know, what is this going to be? And then slowly but surely, uh, it became a beautiful, beautiful building. And it's going to contain hundreds of offices so that people can go there for their health care. It's a, 
It's a great central location. And you're going to be happy about this. They're actually going to have Mike's Pastry there as well. Oh my gosh, I love pastry. <laughs> and Mike's Pastry is a tradition here in Boston, particularly after people finish going to the movies or shopping and they want something to do to kind of top off the day. Mike's Pastry is a great place to go. As someone who lives in Assembly Row, it's like going to be easy access for me. Uh, yeah, that can be a little dangerous. <laughs> that can be very, I mean, I don't know if I can live there because I'd be like huge if I li I'd be eating everything. But I love the assemblage of, um, of just restaurants, retail outlets, the movie theaters, the, you know, Partners Healthcare. It's literally a little city, a little city. So we're going to end the show with a clip with our director, Michael Trer. He cel celebrated his 30th birthday at my, my apartment complex. Yeah, and he's a wonderful guy. <laughs> he's a wonderful man, and we had a lot of fun. We, we kind of got up to a rocky start. We were in a little holding area before they allowed us up to the common area. Well, truth we were in the pet spa, and then yeah. pet mm. spa slash maker space, and right. then we got moved to the second floor, which was a little bit more cozy. It was, and I love the widescreen television where we could watch some of the basketball game while we were enjoying Mike and his friends. It was a lot of fun. It was a great success. And at the clip of the end, I'm actually doing a slow motion and I'm clapping and uh, I look like Nicole Kidman at the Oscars. So I'm like doing this. <laughs> Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Have a great month. See you next month. Bye. Bye. Thank you.